How's it going, my good friends of YouTube? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys had a great weekend and are ready to get back into it. I for sure am. And in today's video, like we do every single Sunday, we're going to break down my game plan for this upcoming week. Stocks I'm looking at, we're going to break down some charts and we'll run through the futures market, what that's looking like and what happened last week in the market. So sit back, relax, go down below, get your 50 50 bucks from M1 Finance. That's running out here in a couple of weeks. Make sure to check it out. All you have to do is use my link, deposit $100, and we each get 50 bucks to invest with. And you guys can check out my Patreon if you want all my real time buys, sells, call outs, a morning update video, and more access to me throughout the day. That's on Patreon, link down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. So it shouldn't be a secret to you guys that the Bulls have been in charge. I mean, what else is new? The markets have been hitting all time highs pretty much every week the past couple of weeks. And we just hit another one on Friday at $445.95 when it comes down to SPY, which you guys should know at this point tracks the S&P 500. And it's very obvious that we've been breaking out. Ever since we saw the ascending triangle um, forming, we broke out of that at 442. That was back about 10 days ago, earlier in August. And it's been game on for the Bulls ever since then. Let's just leave it at that. I mean, we've been going higher and higher and higher. And when it comes to QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ 100, this one, it hasn't been as, um, you know, crazy of a run. I mean, don't get me wrong. it's uh, It's been hitting all-time highs as well, but it's been really choppy ever since the end of July, about the 23rd of July, which at this point was almost a month ago, about three weeks ago to be exact. Um, we've been very choppy around 369, 362. We've been moving around that little six to eight point window, and now we're trying to get back over that hump at 369 to hit another all time high, um, which is right around 369.90. That was hit back on the 6th of August. So we're seeing a breakout here on the hourly chart. We're breaking out of the downwards channel. We're above the moving averages. So I want to see what we end up doing um, right around 369, 370 this upcoming week. Do we break out of there? Do we end up struggling again and, and fail? Maybe go down to the low mid 360s again? Um, it's to be determined. So we're going to be watching that. And when uh, when it comes down to the futures market, um, it, it's, it's not doing much of anything to be honest. Honest. I mean, the S&P futures, they're down 0.1%, down about four points, nothing too crazy. Um, the Dow futures, they're down a little bit more. They're down 50 points, down 0.14%. And we have the NASDAQ 100 futures, they're down three, four points, which for the NASDAQ 100, that's pretty much break even. It's down 0.02%. Again, pretty much break even. So at this point in time, Keep an eye on those uh, main levels, especially on QQQ. I mean, SPY, again, we talked about that. It's breaking out. Uh, but QQQ is on the verge of seeing that big push, in my opinion, if it can get out of 370 bucks. right? Keep that very close on your uh, watch list this week, guys, QQQ, which again, tracks the NASDAQ 100. And a lot of you guys probably think, hey, earnings season's over, right? Wrong. It's not over. We have a lot of companies this week, big companies uh, for that matter, that are reporting earnings. So let's get into that. But before we do that, Make sure to smash the like button for me, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content for me. I'm putting out a, a ton, a ton of content here on YouTube and for the Patreon members. And again, you can join that um, linked right down below. So stock number one is Roblox, ticker symbol RBLX. Um, I always pronounce that wrong. Roblox, Roblox. I'm pretty sure it's Roblox. Um, and you guys can see on this four-hour chart 
this stock's actually breaking out. It has been breaking out um, over the past uh, about week at this point. And you can see the big, big candle here and the big spike in volume, green candle. This was on the 9th of August. Roblox went from 78 bucks to 87 pretty much in that one day. That is a move of about 9%. And with that move, we got out of the wedge here on the four-hour chart. We broke above both moving averages. And we pretty much coasted above the moving averages um, pretty much at that same breakout level for the rest of the week. I mean, we did go down a bit from that initial breakout, I guess you can say, from 87 down to about 84. Uh, but still, very solid breakout. Pure consolidation um, on the 10th of August, pretty much up to where uh, to where we are right now. And as we're speaking on this mic, and as you all can see on the charts, we are still holding above the moving averages. So in my opinion, this is still breaking out. We're just consolidating, you know, letting the dust settle, if you want to say that, and waiting for the next big move, which I believe with earnings coming up here on the 17th, two days from now on Tuesday, we could be getting a big move. Some uh, upwards targets I have are up, you know, uh, what are the what's the word here? Um, upside targets, that's the word. Um, 9340 or 9390 rather that was the resistance from the end of June that gives it from where uh, where we are now about 10% upside if we were to hit that level and another big target on the upside I have is about $104 per share which is roughly that all-time high from the beginning of June so that is a, a key spot and as you all know at this point maybe you don't I'm gonna tell you now if you don't I don't buy stocks, especially ones that I'm looking to trade in the short term right before earnings. I don't do that. That's not my style. I've done it before. I've lost money doing that. So I'm going to wait until they report. I want to see the numbers, the price action, guidance especially, even if it means I miss out on a massive move. I'm okay with that. I can live with that because I've used SoFi as an example the past couple of videos because look at what happened to SoFi. I was in this one. I sold out the day of the earnings report at set. I'm pretty sure it was the day of, right? Yeah. I sold it at 17.45, and then they reported earnings, guys, and then boom, the stock cratered to 15 bucks. So if I were to hold at my initial position of 16.96, I would have been down a uh, 10% in the hole just like that for gambling on earnings. But instead, I took my profits before earnings, locked in about. 50 cents per share profit, and I bought back my shares after they reported uh, because I believe the, the big drop was an overreaction. And who knows? I could be wrong. I could lose money on this, but I'm back in SoFi after that big drop. And you guys know that. I've mentioned that before here. Uh, I'm just using it as an example as to why I don't like holding through earnings. But don't get me wrong. If it's a long-term swing, I'm holding for a couple months, maybe a year, sure, I'll hold through earnings. Um, unless there's something crazy that happens. I don't know. Uh, and, and especially my long-term investments, obviously I hold those through earnings as well. So stock one is Roblox, and I guess so far you could throw that in as well because I own it now and I'm watching it for this week too, but I don't want to talk about it in every video because I mentioned it in the past couple of videos. So stock number two is is Walmart. They report this week as well, ticker symbol WMT. They report on Tuesday, the 17th of August. And you guys can see here, Walmart has been gaining steam. This is a good sign. You know, we've been moving above the moving averages. We broke out of the wedge here. And very recently, I think this was last week. Yeah, it was. We broke 147. Um, 147 was resistance earlier in August and back in uh, February and January a bit, and in uh, December. So the fact that we broke that and we filled the gap up to 149,150, which was a big resistance back in the middle of January, this is a very good sign that bulls are in charge, they want to go higher, and now with earnings coming up in two days, hey man, the next big target on, it, uh, on Walmart is uh, about five bucks higher from where we are now, $154 per share, which was a sticking point in the beginning. 
of December, early of November of 2020. So that would be the next target. And another thing worth mentioning here, guys, you must always do your own research, always do your own due diligence. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you all my opinions because, look, this could easily drop. I mean, look, it's pretty overbought at the same time, um, you know, at the same time as it's breaking out very strongly. You, you can see clearly it's well above the moving averages, so I wouldn't mind it pulling back a bit, uh, maybe to 147 before earnings, and then trying to test that 150 level again. I would much rather see that. Um, then it getting ridiculously overbought, going straight to 155, and then tanking under. But either way, I'm watching 155, 150 on Walmart. I'm keeping a close eye on that. Home Depot is another one. This one's been doing well. Uh, we called out an inverse head and shoulder on this one a couple of weeks ago. I didn't really do a follow-up video on it. Probably should have done that. But now that I'm looking at it a couple weeks after I called out the inverse head and shoulder, um, it clearly played out. So kudos to me, I guess, even though I didn't even trade it. Uh, but you guys saw those previous little ovals there. Let me redraw them now. You can see clearly the left shoulder there, the head right here, and then we got the right shoulder. And now that we made a move up towards 340, we're trying to complete that inverse head and shoulder. We didn't do it quite yet, I, I would argue. Um, there, there is more upside here, uh, upside to about 345 um, from 330, and, and we're on our way. I think there could be a bounce here off that 50 moving average on the four-hour chart um, at about 3.30. From there, like I said, 3.45, which was the all-time high from early May. Let me double-check. Is that an all-time high on Home Depot? It sure is, guys. If you didn't get the memo, most of these stocks that we talk about are at all-time highs. Um, well, maybe maybe not the Chinese ones, which I've been buying Alibaba. That's a whole different topic for a whole different video. Um, but other than that, a lot of these are at all-time highs. And the electric vehicles, those aren't at all-time highs either. But you get my point. 80% of the stocks, it feels like 90% are near all-time highs. So we're going to be watching Home Depot at 3.30 up towards 3.45 with earnings coming out on Tuesday as well, the 17th, same as Roblox and Walmart. It's going to be interesting. Target's another one, TGT. Uh, this is one that's just been ridiculous. I mean, there's no other way I could put it. This stock was $166 five months ago. Now it's $260. It's up $100 per share and that's 40%. And you have to ask yourself, guys, look, this is a great way to analyze stocks. Uh, well, there's many ways. This is one way to look at it. Has Target grown their earnings or revenue, for that matter, 40% since March? Absolutely not. There, there's no way in heck, right? But the stock's up 40%. So you have to realize a lot of these stocks could be getting ahead of themselves. I'm not trying to be a pessimist or a bear right now, uh, but that's one way to look at things. So, and, and this brings up another point. If these earnings are not great, if they're subpar, you best believe that <clears throat> this stock will correct. Um, they report on the 18th, Target does. Uh, so let's say earnings are subpar. This could easily drop $10 a share. It could easily sell off 5 maybe even 10% after hours, which 10% might be pushing it, but it's going to give back a decent chunk of those gains. But even then, it's still going to be very um, lofty. I don't want to say it's necessarily a bubble or extremely overvalued, but you guys get my point, right? Even if it drops 5%, it's still up 30% in the past five months. I mean, it's still a ridiculous outperformer. So I'm watching Target. I'm very excited about that one. Um, Lowe's is another one. LOW, they report on, I believe, Wednesday as well. Yep, Wednesday the 18th. And this one's been choppy. You know, this one hasn't done as great as Target per se. Um, this one's up about 18% since March. And let's see, Home Depot has got to be up. I'm assuming more than Lowe's. Yeah, because Home Depot is hammered. Um, Home Depot's up 25%. So Lowe's out of those three, Lowe's, Target, Home Depot, um, Lowe's is lagging them all. Walmart is probably, um, let's see here, Walmart is up, I, I forgot to say this, Walmart's up 15%. So Walmart's the least, um, it's seen the least rally since March. 
in terms of percentage, but still, 15% gain since March. You can't really complain with Walmart. So back to Lowe's, L-O-W is the ticker. Um, Like I said, very choppy. Very choppy. Ever since May, it's been moving from uh, moving from 190 to 195 as resistance. Support's been at about 185, so about a 10-ish point window there on lows. And with Monday or uh, Friday's move, rather, it went down a dollar fifty, down 0.8 percent. It actually broke back under the moving averages, and we're noticing a death cross. On low, so that's a bit worrisome to me. If we're looking at pure technicals, um, that's worrisome to me, especially into earnings. And if earnings are subpar, uh, like I said with Target, lows could go down. I mean, lows could go 184. Test that low from mid June. It could be even. It could even break that low. Don't get me wrong. It could go down 180, which 180 was resistance. Um, you know, all of February pretty much into March a little bit. So watch out for that death cross on lows. But it, you know, it could open up an opportunity at 180 because at that point, from 180 to 215, which was the all time high a couple months ago, that'd be a drop of 15. Percent, so that'd be a decent correction to where maybe picking up some uh, some shares in a solid blue chip company might not be a bad idea. But I'm not telling you guys to do that because again, I'm not a financial advisor. So the next stock here, which I was hoping was going to crash, but it didn't. Who knows? It might still crash. Give it a couple more months, a couple weeks. It's Nvidia ticker symbol NVDA. Nvidia. Ever since that split, it went uh, it went down before the split. If you guys remember, it went from 210 to about 180, so it did drop a good uh, 15%. And ever since the split happened post-split, NVIDIA's been rocking and rolling from 180. Now it's over 200 again. It's moving above the moving averages. We're noticing a golden cross. And on Friday, it went up 1.4%. So I feel like NVIDIA... It's in a sticking point. We're seeing higher lows, lower highs. We're in this wedge. We're waiting for direction. What direction are we going to pick? Your guess is as good as mine. That is why I have patience. And if you don't have patience, you got to get patience in this market. Uh, Because if you're one of those people that you're just way too antsy all the time, you have to throw money at everything before the trend uh, confirms itself, you're going to be in some trouble. Um, So I'm going to wait and see if NVIDIA breaks out of 205. If so, into earnings here on the 18th on Wednesday, maybe we get a rip to all-time highs. That's very possible. But the second, and I actually prefer the second um, hypothetical scenario, the second we break 200 back under 195, and if we break under 190 to the 180s, This thing could go lower. I mean, we could be pushing 170s, 160s, and I will be a buyer. I've said this before, and I'm sticking to it. 150 to 160, I'll be an NVIDIA buyer. Will we get there? No. I'm not going to say no, but we might not. And that's the thing. If we don't get there, we end up breaking out. So be it. You have to have price targets in the stock market and you have to be diligent with your price targets and stick to them, you know, and 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 be patient. Again, I can't say that enough. So if Nvidia gets down there, I'll be buying some. Uh, Maybe I'll day trade it on the breakout, but I'd be very nervous. Let's just put it that way. Holding shares long in the high 200 or mid 200s even, you know, that's just a bit lofty for me. Uh, which is why, again, I'm waiting for 150 on NVIDIA. Cisco CSCO also reports this week. Um, they report on the 18th on Wednesday, and we actually called this out, I believe, last Sunday, maybe, or some point last week. We called out the Ascending Triangle breakout, um, and we broke out all right. We took out 55 Now we're trading close to $57 per share, and by the looks of it, this wants 58. We're currently at 56.50. This wants 58, which was the high point a couple years ago, I believe, back in July 2019. So about two years ago, that is where we hit the all-time high at about 58.20. So I'm looking to see if this uh, keeps moving up. Let's just put it that way. And by the looks of it, Cisco might even take 58 out, go to 60 plus. That's possible with earnings coming up here in three days. I'm watching that. And the last one for today, guys, 
is a matte applied materials. And this one, technically speaking, is pretty solid, but we just have to hold 130 at a higher low. The previous low was 124 from mid-July. Before that, it was about um, 114 from mid-May. So I want to see if we hold this, fill the gap up towards the mid-140s. That gives it about $15 per share upside. In other words, about 10, 11, 12% with earnings coming up here on the 19th. So that's Thursday. So that gives us a little bit more wiggle room, at least the folks out there, myself included, that don't like holding before earnings or after earnings. Um, that gives us a little wiggle room in case we want to trade it before earnings and hop out before they actually report, which is what I did last week with SoFi, which I mentioned earlier in this video. So I'm watching Applied Materials and, and to quickly run through the list again, guys, Roblox, Walmart, Home Depot, Target, Lowe's, that's four big blue chip companies, uh, Walmart, Home Depot, Target, Lowe's, NVIDIA, Cisco, AMAP, and there's a lot more that I'm watching. I mean, we could do a quick little bonus run here for all you that stuck till the end, and if you stuck till the end, let me know down below, say stuck till the end, or drop the infamous octopus emoji if you guys did stick till the end. That's what we do here on my channel, guys, AMD is one that I'm looking at. You know, AMD ran up 4% on Friday. It broke above the moving average. This is one that I actually bought at $77 months and months ago, and I sold out of it at 118. We timed that sell, dropped to about 104. Now we're trying to rally, and I'm not too convinced that this is going to shoot right back to all-time highs. It might, uh, but I'm not too convinced, which is why I'm keeping it on my watch list. So watching AMD this week, Watching Coinbase at 265 as Bitcoin and crypto in general is running. It's crazy. If you guys look at these crypto prices, um, although I'm not too heavily invested in crypto, I know some of my audience out there, you guys own like 20 coins. <clears throat> I only own one. I own Bitcoin. Well, that's a lie. I own 50 bucks of uh, of uh, Dogecoin on Robinhood for whatever that's worth. Uh, and that's the crazy thing. Dogecoin's gone up. 100x, not 100x, uh, well, it has gone up 100x, but in the past couple months, it's gone up 2x, or even the past couple weeks, it was 16 cents, now it's 30 cents, Bitcoin's running up, so I'm watching Coinbase due to this resurgence in um, crypto, I'm also watching Chewy, CHWY, this is one that we called out a couple weeks ago, inverse head and shoulder, that's playing out, looking to see if this busts the move up over $100 per share. Uh, Palantir is one I'm looking at for a move up towards $27, $28, which was the high from the end of June. I'm looking at GDX, even though a lot of people are like stocks. That's a boomer ETF. Gold is for boomers. I beg to differ. I mean, I think gold has its place. Sure, uh, so does Bitcoin. Um, and a lot of people think it's one or the other. Oh, no, Bitcoin Bitcoin's the winner. Gold's the winner. You're an idiot for owning Bitcoin. You're an idiot for owning gold. I say, call me crazy, but I say own both. Hey, own both. I do. I own gold stocks. I own physical gold. I own Bitcoin. I own Coinbase. I own both, guys. You know, that is, that's is—that's what I do. Um, and we'll, we'll wrap it up there. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you all enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and again, drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. And if you want more access to me throughout the day, if you want to support the channel and get a bunch of exclusive perks, such as my buys, sells, call-outs all in real time, and a morning update video every single trading day, that is on Patreon, link down below, or you guys can go to StarSurfest.com slash Patreon. That's StarSurfest.com slash Patreon. Make sure to also snag up your 50 bucks from M1 Finance, link down below, which by the way, that's running out soon. Make sure to get that. All you have to do is use my link, deposit $100, and we each get 50 bucks to invest with. Check it out. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching again. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace out.